Hi there, good afternoon. My name is Adalia from PerfectStylishCuts.com and today I wanted to create a video to talk about Silhouette Studio version 4 with you guys. I wanted to present some of the new features and I wanted to help give you guys a guide on how you can get this update installed into your computer today. Um, so some of the new features for this are going to be awesome, some of them are going to look a little bit scary, and some of them will actually look familiar if you guys are used to uh, more like graphic design software or photo editing software like Adobe products and stuff. But we are going to go through it all today. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, so first things first is uh, if you want to check if you already have this update installed, uh, then all you need to do first is go to help about Silhouette Studio and it's going to tell you which version of Silhouette Studio you have. So currently I have 4.0.623. This is the most updated version of Silhouette Studio that is available for download. It is a fully supported version. Uh, I got an email on May 16th stating that it was being released. It used to be in beta, but we are now good to go, you guys. If you want to update, go ahead and do it. So let's go ahead and get started today. Let's talk about all of the new features and what this update has to offer. So as you can tell, the first thing that we can notice right away is an updated look, right? So it looks fabulous. It looks beautiful and sleek and modern. It looks nothing like version 3 did, really. There are so many new things. Um, things have moved around. Uh, things are just easier to use now, you guys. You will also notice uh, that unlike version 3, when you update uh, your software, you start it up for the first time, it is going to be so fast. I remember before um, version 3, I used to have to wait even a few minutes for it to load up all of my fonts and install my settings and stuff like that. You don't have that lag with version 4. It starts up really quick. So that is definitely an awesome thing that they did. Next thing that you will notice is going to be the updated navigation bars. Uh, the first thing that I noticed right away was that the store and the library had been moved. Previously, they used to be located on the left-hand side, but now we are uh, finding these at the top right-hand corner. So if you select to go to the store, it'll take you directly to the store embedded in the software. Uh, and if you elect uh, to go into the library to look at your current files or look into your cloud, then you would just go ahead and select the library function. Okay, and uh, there is the library. Now, if you have not signed up for the Silhouette Cloud, it will walk you through doing this. I always, always encourage you guys to use the Silhouette Cloud. It's free, um, unlimited uh, Silhouette designs can be saved in it. And then I believe that you get up to one gig Let's see here. You get one gig for standard members, uh, custom content. This means that you have one gig of storage for your own designs that you purchase that are not from the Silhouette store. You can also uh, have five gigabytes of Silhouette storage if you are a design store subscriber. So that is pretty awesome. And I did see in the previous screen that you can install the cloud and have access to your designs in up to five devices. So if you have the Silhouette app on your iPad and your cell phone, or you have a Silhouette Studio installed in multiple computers, you can access all of your designs without having to re-download that. So that is awesome. Now, uh, I did want to go ahead and mention before we move forward, again, these are found up at the top right-hand corner, but before you install and before we go through with any of this, I want to teach you guys how you can back up your files uh, before going to version 3. Now, this is going to look the exact same way in version 3, um, or before, I'm sorry, before you go to version 4, in version 3, you would follow these steps to back up your designs if you don't have the cloud. You would go ahead and enter your library. You would select the local user. You would right click and export local user and it's going to save your Silhouette Studio library. Select just your desktop or folder where you wanna put it um, and then save that. You want to back up before going to version four in case anything wonky happens, okay? All right, so now let's go ahead and move on. So we're back in a studio. Now you know where you can find the store in the library. The next thing that I wanted to go ahead and mention to you guys um, is that uh, with this, uh, they did go ahead and finesse the send to your machine pro uh, process. 
let's just go ahead and pretend that I was going to cut, uh, you know, what I have right here. We would go uh, to send. I would go ahead and highlight my items, and it is going to um, make this just so much easier for me. So you have material, actions, and send, and you want to just go ahead and follow this as is. So for example, if I was going to cut this onto heat transfer vinyl, let's just say uh, glitter. For some reason, I was going to do glitter. You can go ahead and see your design um, has the cut lines now and then you would go to actions and you can go ahead and adjust your knife tools uh, from here uh, if you want to just cut edge or cut all the way lines fills layers that you want to cut and then when you go to send um, it usually will have a thing if you're doing heat transfer material it will remind you to um, flip your design. So you want to always go ahead and do that. You can do that by going to object, mirror, flip horizontally. Just remember if you're doing heat transfer vinyl, this is a very important step to take to make sure that when you iron on uh, your design, it's going to look the right way and not turned around. Okay. So let me just go ahead and do that. Okay, and so that that is a wonderful um, new thing, a new process that I found. Uh, the send to the machine is just going to be way easier for a lot of people now. The next thing that I wanted to go ahead and talk about is going to be um, the toolbar. So the toolbar is a dynamic toolbar is what they're calling it, and the toolbar is this this toolbar right here uh, that enables you to very quickly edit uh, things without having to go to a lot of different screens okay so for example if I was going to edit this you know piece of text right here I would select it and you can right away see I have colors line color no more hitting those buttons individually to do this it's all right here in this toolbar you can change fonts uh, right here change the size, align tools, flipping tools, send front to back. I mean, you name it. It is just a ton easier with the dynamic toolbar that we have now. You will also notice that we also have uh, these panels on the side and they're calling them panels because just like the Adobe products, uh, they are floating panels. You can go ahead and move them around. You can have more than one available at a time. Um, you can even go ahead and stack them if you wanted to. So you want to go ahead and add multiple on one side. You can go ahead and do that. Let's say that you wanted to have the trace, but you also wanted to have the line style one. You can go ahead and do that from there as well, okay? All right. So, yeah, the panels are going to be an awesome thing. It will allow you to work faster and have access to all of your tools at the same time. The next thing uh, that I wanted to go ahead and talk about with you guys uh, that's also pretty awesome about this is going to be um, the, the new project startup uh, options. I'm not sure that you guys have noticed that, but once you do update your version, the first thing that you're going to see when you open up a new project is going to be this a specific window just like before. But if you go to File, New Project Wizard, look at this, you guys. Oh my gosh, this is awesome. No more trying to set up everything on your own or going and looking for these features. If you want to create a pic scan um, or you want to upload a pic scan file, you can do so. You can do your print and cut right away. Look at this. Let me just show you the print and cut. It right away sets this up for you. So no more setting up a registration marks yourself and having to do all kinds of setup. It is just ready for you to put your designs on there and print and cut. Uh, you can also uh, see here when you do the card, for example, it sets it up in card format for you as well. So it's very easy. It flips the mat for you. You don't have to worry about this at all, you guys. The new Project Wizard is amazing. I love it. It is wonderful and it is very well welcomed. Uh, we needed something like that, you know, just to make designing easier. Uh, so another thing that is new uh, with Silhouette Studio version 4 is going to be the tracing function. Let me just go ahead and get rid of this panel and open 
I'll open the tracing function. Now I don't have something to show you guys how to trace right now. I don't normally trace a lot of things, but I know that there are some of you who do like tracing, um, you know, uh, like clip art and stuff like that for stickers and such. It's going to be amazing. So not only do you have the same tools that we did before, which is to select the trace area, um, and then you can, you know, select the different thresholds and the high pass filters and stuff like that. But now you have this little thing right here. It's called the eyedropper tool. And what this allows you to do is trace by color. So for example, you know, let me just go ahead and convert this to path and we'll talk about convert to path right now. Okay, so let's say that I have this right now and I wanted to go ahead and trace that, but I want to trace it by color. First, I want to trace the pink and then I want to trace the green. Um, I would do trace by color um, and then I can go ahead and select the green color. Okay, and then I'm going to just hit trace. And look at that, you guys, just the inside was traced. Now, if I wanted to trace the outline, for example, I'm going to go back to this trace by color and I'm going to select that outer one. Okay, and I'm going to do the outline and then I'm tracing that. Oh, it did not do it. Let's try again. So trace by color. I'm going to select that outline color. I'm going to do this single area. Oh, it's not do it. And of course, it is a little bit um, wonky because this is tax. Uh, so with a uh, clip art where it's much bigger, it would be easier to do this. Let me just go ahead and make this bigger to see if I can show you guys. Let's see. We can up the tolerance to see if it'll let us pick it. Trace by color. Okay, so there is for the box. It's not recognizing that small outline, mostly because I think it is very small for it. Let me just see here. Oh, there you go. So it picked it up. Now I'm just going to go ahead and do trace. And there it is, you guys. Obviously, like I said, this font is very uh, close to one another and that outline is very small. So you guys can basically get the gist of it. The tracing features are amazing on this. You've never been able to trace like that by color before. If we did, I remember how long it used to take us. We used to have to go through a lot of extra steps to be able to get that done, um, like separating things and then tracing. But now you don't have to do that. So I'm just gonna go back and get my font the way I had it. Uh, and I wanna talk about uh, convert to path, which is something that you guys saw me do. Uh, and let me show you what convert to path is, okay? So convert to path is uh, something that allows me to turn this text. This text is editable text right now. I used, I entered it by using this tool uh, and then customizing my fonts with the dynamic toolbar, okay? So as of right now, this is editable text and I cannot save this in a way where I can transfer it to somebody else and per se, if they don't have this font, uh, it won't look this way. It'll look completely different with just like an aerial font or something. It won't transfer right unless we save it as convert to path, which converts it into an image. So now let's do convert to path, you guys. And this is more like an SVG convert almost because now this has been converted into a path, meaning that it is no longer editable text. You can see I can double click on it and nothing's happening. Uh, now what I can do though, is I can ungroup and look at that. Isn't that amazing, you guys? We haven't been able to do this before, not this way. This is awesome. So this is with the convert to path feature. Now that we have it like this, if you wanted to go ahead and uh, make this into a compound path, so make this a one, you know, a one line uh, image, you can go ahead and do that that way. But I wanted to show you guys uh, what that feature did. It's really, really awesome. Okay, and I think that a lot of people will learn how to design now in Silhouette uh, Studio uh, when we're doing our monograms and stuff like that. And we can learn how to save our own SVG files to be able to reuse them again. So if you make, you know, like a Bible quote, per, you know, let's just say for a sign um, and you want to go ahead and share that with your friends or in a group or anything like that, they don't have to have the fonts as well to use it. You can convert that to path. 
uh, and then you can go ahead and save it and share it if you wanted to go ahead and do that. I don't suggest ever sharing your files and stuff like that because, you know, I'm a designer and I sell my files. So none of my own files should be shared because they're available for purchase. But if you wanted to share your own created files, that would be an easy way to do so as well. It's, it's really nice. Now I've heard, and I'm not sure how true this is because I haven't seen anything official from Silhouette, but I know that a lot of influencers out there have mentioned that later on in the future this year, um, Silhouette Studio version four might actually upgrade again and update, I mean, uh, and include a feature that would let us save as an SVG file. So wouldn't that be something? That would be something if we could do that with this software. It just converts, you know, the the really, really um, slow functioning, the really old school version three, it converts it into just a full graphic design software. It's really nice. So let's move on. Uh, the next thing that I wanted to mention to you guys is uh, that now Silhouette Studio uh, it does include some tutorials to help you learn how to use the software more easily. And they are embedded tutorials. You guys check this out. So if you go to the help, button and then select uh, tutorials. It will bring up a list of tutorials that you can go ahead and take. Uh, and then uh, it'll also give you uh, the level of difficulty for them. So let's just go ahead and do the introduction to Silhouette Studio. It says it's five minutes. You can go ahead and start that up and you can see that it has animated um, photos or little videos uh, that will walk you through how to use this. So no more going to the manual, the PDF manual that you have to print or search through. They're actually walkthrough tutorials, you guys. You can go ahead and follow it along and do the steps as it's showing you. So this is a really nice feature. Um, I think that a lot of the newbies out there will enjoy this, especially because there's going to be a learning curve when you download this software. It just looks different than version 3 and it functions different. The things are not where they used to be. So now that we've done this, and now that we've gone through all of the new features and saw what you can do and saw how you can back up your library before you swap over, a lot of people want to know, how can I get this update? Where do I have to go to install this into my computer? Well, the one thing that you don't want to do is that you don't want to go to help uh, and upgrade your Silhouette Studio because it's going to tell you that there is no update available. Um, or it's going to ask you to enter in a new license code, okay? So you don't want to do this from here. What you want to do is that you want to go into a new browser, into silhouetteamerica.com, and I will post the link to this for you guys. You want to go to silhouetteamerica.com. Let me just maximize this. And you want to look for this button up at the top right-hand corner that says Update Software. You select Update Software, and you can see uh, that the newest version that is available for download is V4.0.623, which is the one that I have. It is the newest one available, you guys. It's no longer in beta. It's been released to the public, and it is supported. So you want to go ahead and select if you have Mac or Windows and then you just want to go ahead and follow the prompts until it is installed into your computer. I've heard that for Mac users you can go ahead and download both. Uh, so you can have the V3 installed and install the V4 and you can use them separately from one another. But in Windows I'm not sure exactly how you can do that. I only know that it replaces version 3. That's what it did on mine anyways. So again, I hope that this tutorial has helped you guys and has walked you through some of the new features, let you know what you can expect if you update. You don't have to update right away. Version 3 is still out there for you to use, and you can always go back to it if need be by just going back into the Silhouette America um, page and looking for previous editions. Uh, you can go ahead and do that as well uh, if you want to go to beta and legacy software. So if you don't like V4, you can always go back to V3 by doing um, the download links through here to see what version you want to go back to. But yeah, I think that it's a really nice update. I think that it's going to be very well welcomed, and I think that it's going to help a lot of us be able to create new designs right away in the software that we're going to use to cut and send it out right away. I know that it's for sure going to cut some time out for me. Um, you know, I feel like now I can create some stuff in here and save it on my cloud and then send it to my machine right away. I don't have to go through a lot of different steps to do that anymore.
So I hope that you guys enjoyed this. Again, my name is Adalia from PerfectStylishCuts.com. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this kind of a video, also please leave it in the comments and feel free to share this with anyone that you think uh, might like this or find it helpful. And I hope that you guys have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.